Hey guys, so today I've got an empties video for you. I always love filming these. They're my favorite videos to film. I am just going to take you through my trash and share reviews on all of them. And the idea is that because I've used up everything all the way to the end, I've really had a chance to get to know the product, form a strong opinion on it. Also, don't mind my poor little snake plant back here. It got knocked over by a kitten for the third time <laughs> yesterday, so it's looking a little sad. He's a trooper though, so. Let's get into it. I like to start with the products that I would not repurchase, and then I work my way up to the products that I would repurchase. All right, <laughs> I'm back. back from the floor. I do have a mascara to talk about. This is the Anastasia Lash Brag Mascara. I got this as part of the Sultry Vault that I purchased during the holidays last year, so I got a really good deal on the vault, meaning I basically got this for like a few dollars, <laughs> but it's at full price, it's like 25 or so dollars, and then they do sell a mini of this as well. I actually really liked what this did for my lashes, but unfortunately this was a smudger. Really not the worst smudging I've experienced. I have experienced worse, like from the Elf Lash It Loud mascara. This wasn't quite that bad, but it was still like noticeable, especially for a high-end mascara. And a, a few people have told me they had the same experience with it, so wouldn't repurchase, wouldn't recommend it. I just think there's plenty of good drugstore mascaras. And then another makeup product I would not repurchase was this Cloven Hallow Lip Glaze in the shade Angelic. This was in my project pan for all of one month. That's how long it took me to use this up. There was just so little product in here. I think I probably got a total of 25 uses out of this, like, all together from the time I opened it until the end. Um, I did get this in PR, so luckily I didn't actually spend my money on it, but I wouldn't recommend it. wouldn't buy it myself. And um, the gloss itself was fine. It was a nice kind of like neutral pink shade. I enjoyed the shade. I thought the formula was nice, but it was nothing that special, especially not for the price like per ounce. Um, I did see that Cloven Hallow is rebranding. I think they did finish their rebrand, so I'm not sure if this is still sold or not, but if it is, I don't recommend it. So next up for some skincare products, I have the Kopari Coconut Water Moisture Cream. And I actually really liked the texture and the feel of this cream on my skin. Unfortunately, it seemed to break me out. So I ended up using it as a hand cream. I just kept it on my desk and applied to my hands whenever I felt like my hands were dry, which is very often. I don't know why I just have such dry hands. Okay, it actually looked like this has been discontinued. So I guess never mind anyway, but... Um, I think it was probably the coconut oil in here that broke me out. I think I just need to stay away from like face, skincare products that have coconut oil in them because they do seem to cause me to break out more than usual. Yeah, but if you're not sensitive to coconut oil, you might really like this because I thought it felt really nice and like nourishing on my skin, but it, yeah, just didn't work for me. Um, another thing I wouldn't repurchase is the Ordinary 100% Organic Cold Pressed Rosehip Seed Oil. I know so many people swear by this. I bought it because I know a lot of people really like this for fading acne scarring, but I just never got around to using it for that and until it did seem to, like it was kind of starting to go off a little bit, so I ended up just dumping it into my body lotion and using it up really quickly that way, so at least I was able to use it sort of, but I'm just not a facial oil person. I don't know. I just prefer for my moisturizer to do all of the work for me, so I don't feel like I need an oil on top of that, and I don't really enjoy the feel of an oil on my skin, so it's just not for me, but I know a lot of people love this. I just couldn't bring myself to use it. This is actually a boyfriend empty. He's the one that mainly used this, but I did use it a few times and he also like told me his opinion of it. So I feel like I'll go ahead and share it in case you were wondering about this product. But this is a Versed Dew Point Moisturizing Gel Cream. So gel creams just aren't quite like moisturizing enough for my skin. I think they're a really good option for oilier skin. Right now my skin is kind of combination, but I still need a really good rich moisturizer. Um, because of like the dry patches that I sometimes get so not quite hydrating enough for me He said that he thought this was okay, but just not as good as some other moisturizers He seems to really like moisturizers that contain niacinamide. That seems to be like a common theme we've discovered um, He's been on a little skincare journey. It's so sweet um, But yeah, this doesn't have that in it. So his favorite is the elf holy hydration face cream, but this, this one was fine for him. It didn't like break him out or anything, which a lot of moisturizers do. So it might be a good option to check out if you have oily skin and you like gel moisturizers. It is fragrance-free, which is really nice. Moving on to products in the second category. These are products that I 
liked but wouldn't repurchase or they were just fine but I would just like to move on and try something else and they weren't like life-changing. Actually this I would repurchase if the brand were still cruelty free but this is the Wet n Wild Mega Liner in Voltage Blue. This was in my project pan for a few months. Love this color. This is the perfect cobalt blue. I did end up buying a replacement of this from Makeup Revolution in the shade Sky Blue, I think it is. It's a very similar color, like practically identical. And so far that one performs for me just as well as this one did. So I'm happy with that alternative. But this was a great liquid liner for like $3. Um, it's got like a felt tip rather than a brush tip, which I felt like made it a little bit easier to control. Very smooth, stayed on very well, just a really good liquid liner. And then another product, this was such an exciting empty in my project pan. This is the Too Faced Born This Way multi-use sculpting concealer. I had the shade Snow. I actually really liked this concealer. First of all, incredible value here. This lasted me so long. Um, I have had this in my collection since I think 2019, like early 2019. So not even that long, I guess. But I, I will tell you, I bought this in, when I lived in Seattle in my first apartment. So two apartments ago, which I feel like that's a good indicator that I had it for a long time. But I really did enjoy the formula of this concealer. It had good coverage, but it wasn't too dry or cakey or anything. Just a very easy to use concealer. I felt like it was very reliable. I liked it a lot, honestly. Um, the shade was a little bit too yellow. <laughs> I've, that's the second time I've said that in a video recently. I said yellow instead of yellow. I don't say that in real life. I don't know what's wrong with me. The shade was a little bit too yellow for me. And it was a struggle even finding this shade, which I think is the closest match for me in the line. But I think I would just like to move on to other brands. I don't know, Too Faced as a brand, it's not on like the top of my priorities of brands that I want to buy from, you know what I mean? Like, I just feel like there's other brands I'd rather look into. And I really, really like the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer, which to me is very similar to this, basically a dupe for this. So I might as well buy the $6 one instead of the $30 one. Cost per ounce, the e.l.f. one is still more affordable. I did calculate that a while ago. So, but this is a really good bang for your buck. They do also sell a mini of this, which I think is nice if you don't want to commit to like this ginormous one. And then I've got two hair care products in this category. So first off, I have the Garnier Plumping Treat Shampoo with watermelon extract. And this I bought like basically the day after we found out that Garnier was cruelty free because I was just so excited to finally be able to buy from this brand. And I, the main thing I liked about this was the scent. It smells like super strong, like it's a very strong fruity scent like a watermelon Jolly Rancher. And I love when my shampoos, conditioners, hair products smell really good. Like I like a strong scent for those just because I want my hair to smell good. It just, I don't know, it puts me in a good mood when I'm in the shower. So that was my favorite thing about it. As far as the performance of it, I felt like it was just average. I don't know. I'm pretty indifferent though when it comes to shampoo. Like most of them are the same to me, <laughs> you know, like they don't make that big of a difference. Um, but the Garnier Whole Blends Gentle Oat Milk Shampoo, I think is what it's called. It's in like the white bottle with the pink cap. That one is amazing. Like that is one shampoo that I feel like really, I notice a difference between that and other shampoos. And I think it's even more affordable than this. So that is my new favorite. That one I can see myself repurchasing over and over again. Probably wouldn't buy this again, but I did enjoy it while we had it, mainly because it smelled so good. And then another hair product that I just felt kind of so-so about, this was the Eva NYC Main Magic 10-in-1 Conditioner. Really liked the scent of this, and I don't know, it was just kind of average to me. I didn't feel like it was like life-changing for my hair, but yeah, I don't know, it was nice, but I think I would just like to try something else next. All right, I've got three candles that I feel like these were all good, but I probably wouldn't repurchase them again if I had the option. I'll just go through these quickly because they're not beauty related. But first I have the Rekindle Candle Company Fig and Moss Candle. I got this at my local farmer's market and I did really enjoy the scent. Very nice springtime scent, very kind of fresh and grassy, you know. But look at how much wax is left at the bottom. This is only a four ounce candle and there's like so, there's so much wax left. I don't know if that was my bad, like maybe I did something wrong. I know it depends on like how well you like trim the wick, but I always trim the wick. I always leave it burning so that it doesn't tunnel or anything. I didn't have any tunneling with this, but 
there's just so much wax left. So I will be putting this into my wax warmer. I did finally buy a wax warmer from Target. I love that thing. Best $15 I've ever spent because I do burn candles a lot and I always have leftover wax. But this is like a crazy amount of wax to have leftover. So I was a little let down by that, especially because this was $10. I mean, I like supporting local businesses like that. So I was happy to support them. But yeah, I don't know. I was just kind of kind of disappointed by that. All right, this was an Aldi candle. I love their candles. And this was the scent Santal Coconut. It's in this really pretty jar. I had this in the background of my videos for a little while. Same with this one, actually. <laughs> nice warm coconutty scent. I do think this is a really pretty jar, too, that I think I will probably try to save maybe for brushes or something like that. Most Aldi candles are like limited time, so I don't think you can get this anymore, but I really enjoyed that while we had it. And then this one, I was kind of disappointed by this one. This was the Huntington Home Sparkler Cupcakes candle. I normally love these Huntington Home candles. They have three wicks, which is great. And they're usually like $4, $4 or $5, which is just such a great um, deal for such a big candle. Um, so I don't know, the scent of this was not as good as some of their others. It was just a very one note kind of scent, just kind of a plain vanilla cupcake scent, fine scent, but the scent throw was not nearly as good as some of their other three wick candles. And there was something with the wicks on this one where it was almost like the wicks would burn faster than the wax. So the wicks would get like too short and then you'd like walk by too fast or like move the candle an inch and it would burn out and so you'd have to relight it. It was just kind of, kind of silly. So I was like trying really hard to pan this candle recently because I was tired of it and I was ready to move on to my fall candle that I had saved. So yeah, that was kind of a letdown, but I don't think you can get this scent anymore anyway. But normally I do really like their three wick candles. Moving on to the products that I really liked and would repurchase. So first I have another shampoo and conditioner. This is actually the set. And first of all, we ran out of these at basically the same time, which I feel like never happens. How often do you use up a matching shampoo and conditioner at the exact same time? I feel like that is a rare occurrence. But this is the Eva NYC Lazy Jane Air Dry Shampoo and Conditioner. These I got in PR through Octoly, by the way, but we both really like these. Nathan likes them even more than I did, but I like them too. <laughs> but basically the idea behind these is that they're meant to be used on days where you're just planning on letting your hair air dry. Maybe you're not planning on heat styling it. And they are meant to, it says texturizes, tousles, and adds body. I felt like these added like a nice amount of volume and just like airiness to my hair. Um, the thing is, I wouldn't want to use these every day because the conditioner especially is, is a kind of a thinner conditioner. And a lot of days I do prefer something thicker, more hydrating than that, just because my ends do get kind of dry. So um, that's the only thing. But for like maybe a couple days a week when I just wanna let my hair air dry and kind of have like a beachy waviness to it, these are perfect for that. So definitely would consider buying these with my own money. They also come in aluminum cans, <laughs> bottles. A couple of makeup things in this category. First of all, the Eco Tools Bio Blender. Really liked this. I actually have a backup because I bought two at the same time, but this is a biodegradable face sponge. You can compost it in your like backyard compost. I did start a compost pile that I'm going to take to my like local drop-off, but this sponge is super nice. I used it for much longer than they recommend. They say to use it for a month, but I found that I was able to get way more use out of it. I think I used it for four months. Um, really nice, soft, kind of bouncy sponge. I really like the shape of these because it's got like this sort of wedge shape where you can really get into like the inner corner of your eye and then it's got the round end as well. The only thing I've noticed with this is it does tear pretty easily. I feel like early on it did start to tear after a few washes, but I didn't find that that took away from the effectiveness of the sponge. I feel like it did still did a good job blending in my makeup. So I liked that, highly recommend. And then this I really liked, but it's discontinued sadly. But this, if you watch my Project Pan, then you are very familiar with this guy. This is the e.l.f. Smooth Matte Eyeshadow in Soft Beige. This is part of their like Beautifully Bare line. But um, it's basically like a matte cream eyeshadow. And you can use this in a variety of ways. I actually used it as a bronzer for my face most of the time. But on the eyes, it actually works really well as an eyelid primer and a base for eyeshadows or just on its own as like a soft wash of color all over the eyes. So I really enjoyed it. I think I got this as a gift with purchase, but if it were still available, probably wouldn't buy this shade again just because I, I got a little sick of this using it for like a year in my project pan. But if they had like other shades, I probably would 
consider repurchasing if it were still available. I've got my favorite toothpaste again. This is the Hello Naturally Whitening toothpaste. I've had this in many empties. Best toothpaste. It's just, it's got a great flavor. It makes my mouth feel really clean. I do feel like it kind of maintains the whiteness of my teeth. Although I do need to like actually whiten my teeth soon. Um, then this I really like. This was a new find, but this is dental floss. The Dr. Tongue's Smart Floss. I think I bought this on Grove and I did buy another one. I really liked the flavor of this especially. It has like a cardamom flavor, which is kind of an unusual flavor for floss. Usually they're minty, but I really liked the cardamom. It's a, it's a very clean flavor, but it's just something a little bit different. Kind of like a citrusy, peppery sort of flavor if you've never tried that anything with that flavor before. But And the floss itself was good. I felt like it was the right thickness to really get into my teeth and like get in there and clean things out. But it was also very strong. And I also really appreciate that the packaging is paper. Then I've got, the rest is just kind of random. This is a bar soap from Aldi, it's their source brand. I'm honestly not certain about the cruelty-free status of this company, but I just was in a pinch and needed bar soap. And it's honestly really nice. You can get two bars for like $2. So it's a great deal. The bar has lasted a really long time compared to other brands. And it's kind of like a dupe for the Dove Beauty Bar. So similar to that. And we just use that in the shower as like a body soap. I don't know. Honestly, I might just continue purchasing these. It's a very like basic kind of no frills soap but it just gets the job done and it's so cost effective. And I don't know, I think, I know Aldi UK is Leaping Bunny certified. I'm not sure about Aldi like USA though, but there's also a lot of other things I really like about Aldi as a company. Like I feel like they're a pretty ethical, environmentally friendly company. So I feel pretty good about purchasing from their store brand, even if I'm not like 100% sure about their cruelty-free status. I'm also at this weird point with cruelty-free. I feel like a lot of people are at this point right now where we're kind of like, what even, does anything even make sense anymore in 2021? I don't know. There's just been a lot of like new information coming out. I don't even know what to think. So anyway, I'm still trying my best to be cruelty-free, but all I'm saying is like for a basic essential like body soap, I feel like I'm willing to choose like the cheaper option, even if I'm not positive that it's cruelty free. And finally, I've got this Method gel hand wash refill. Um, so this is what I use to refill our hand soaps. So it's just like this big pouch <laughs> that has the equivalent of three times a bottle of like soap, hand soap. And so this is what I use to refill just the existing bottles that we have. Um, and it's nice. It's definitely, I mean, it's still obviously plastic packaging, but it is recyclable. It's number seven. I think you'd have to recycle that with like your store bag drop off, but it is much less plastic than buying pump bottles of soap over and over again. And it's pretty cost effective as well. So I really enjoy it. And the scent is sweet water. I really like the scent from Method. It's a very just mild, clean scent. Very, I don't know, very calming scent to me. So this is like probably the second or third time I've repurchased this and I already have another one. So those are all of my empties from the last like month or two. And yeah, I always just like sitting down and sharing my trash with you guys because I don't know, it's oddly satisfying to see empty products. And it's also a great way to share some reviews on products I've used up. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you like empties videos, I will link my empties playlist down below. I've done so many of these over the years on my channel. And otherwise, I hope you have a great rest of your day and hopefully I will talk to you again very soon in my next video. Bye.